Yeah, now I got my every, everything's going. So I I have my Zoom going, I got my camera going, everything's going right now. You know, nice. yeah, same here. The only thing I don't have is some uh, some uh, some Fenn coffee. That's the only uh, thing I don't have. I'm just trying no. to figure out how come you didn't send me any I, in anticipation of this this discussion. Now thinking about it, because I got my coffee right here. So Max, I just want to say uh, number one. It's an honor to talk to you. Uh, number two, all the things you've been able to accomplish over uh, of, of the period of your life and all the, the efforts that you've done to give back and just like completely change the face of endurance sports is amazing. And I just want to say welcome to the Someone Like Me speaker series by Gatorade yes. Endurance because you're, you're like me. Exactly. We, you know, we look the Seriously. same. I and know. I remember... When I started, you know, playing, you know, football, basketball, you know, and then I started doing swimming and cycling, and there was a little bit of a different air to that world. Seriously. So I just wanted to say I love the fact that you went full in on it, and I just want everybody to know just a little bit more about you. So, you know, just, just give me a little bit more background. Yeah, so I'm Max Fennell. I am a professional triathlete. I'm also an entrepreneur. I have my own coffee company. Uh, I also do obstacle course racing now, trail running, uh, open water swimming, anything that's in the realm of endurance sports, I'm pretty much doing it now, and hopefully I will get into some adventure racing eventually soon. What was your first experience when you jumped into the water? Because to be honest, a lot of black folks, we don't swim, and there's yeah. some so many stereotypes that, that say, you know, you're black, you don't, you don't swim. You know, I remember when I went to Australia and I was swimming in the ocean, they were like, you know what this is? This is water and this is sand. You know, there's all these different stereotypes that are baked into it. Seriously. Well, for me, honestly, I've been in open water since I was 10 years old. I went to a sports camp when I was younger. And so we always joke about when I did my first open water swim, I was talking to my buddy Joe. And I was just like, Joe, I got the Philly triathlon coming up. I'm nervous about swimming in open water. Like, what do you think? He's like, what are you talking about, bro? Like, when we were younger, we used to swim to the island. We used to water ski. And then I was just like, oh, yeah. So, you know, my first time in open water swimming was when I was 10 years old at this sports camp that I used to go to. And then when I got older, I was able to overcome my open water fears just from being able to tap into just jumping into a lake when I was younger. So was it your mother, your father? Was it someone in your family that got you involved in swimming? I mean, there's enough barriers to entry living in, you know, whether you live in the city or suburbs, just having access to a pool. But how did you find your way into the water? Honestly, it was my mom. She, my, I was raised by a single mom that made us do everything. So I had to learn piano lessons. You know, we had we had to read all the time. You know, she always had us doing stuff with our studies. And then she also made sure that we had swim lessons very at, at a young age. So that by the time I was 10, I was able to at least float in the water. <laughs> <laughs> so were you competing or were you just swimming and just No, floating? no. I was just like the kid that could just jump off the dock in the deep water and, you know, be able to just splash around. Like I had never competed or anything. I think, you know, as I mentioned, I went to a sports camp. So at the sports camp we went to, we would have to do, you know, swimming competitions. But like I always just did things as breaststroke. I never swam like laps in a lane or anything until I started doing triathlons. Same. Breaststroke. And, <laughs> and, and for me, you know, I started Jesus. swimming when I was when I was six years old. Actually my mother threw me into the pool when I was barely six months. Yeah. Right. So I was part of the crew where you just kind of like toss him into the water. Then all of a sudden he just kind of sinks to the bottom because we're a little bit more dense. Yeah. Right. Yeah, and then all yeah. of a sudden I kind of percolated back up to the exactly. top, floated, yeah. turned back over. And then my mom started teaching me how to swim because my mom was a big advocate of swimming. And then I started getting into competition when I was when I was six years old. But it was you know, it was it was challenging. But yeah. now you're you're the first black pro triathlete. I know. Mind is blown. Right. All I did time. my first triathlete when I was 12 and I didn't see you out there, Max Fennell. I know. So. You know, how did how did you transition from jumping into the pool and swimming and, you know, doing breaststroke to competing on a bike run and also swimming? Well, the first part of the journey was that I was working at a coffee shop at the time and I had just sprained my MCL and I thought I was going to become a professional soccer player. And, I, and working at this coffee shop, this gentleman literally comes in and he's just, in, you know, he's a regular customer. And he was like, what are you going to do now? And I was just like, I don't know. I heard about these triathlons. So. 
you know, maybe I'll go do an Ironman. And he's just like, whoa, buddy, slow down. Like an Ironman's <laughs> a big deal. He's like, you know, we live here in Philly. Why don't you sign up for the Philadelphia Triathlon? And the Philly triathlon community is a very, very close knit community. So I was very lucky to have a lot of friends teach me how to do flip turns in the pool mm. and just introduce me to um, intervals on the track. And uh, a really good friend of mine, John Kenny, who's known as being one of the strongest uh, triathlons, open water swimmers out there. Really good friend of mine. He's the person that introduced me to swimming in 50 degree water. So <laughs> which is different crazy. than oh swimming in, in a little bit warmer water. Yeah, yeah, seriously. So I was very lucky that early on in my triathlon uh, career that the Philadelphia community just opened up things, opened up the doors for me, allowed me to really experience the triathlon. And I had a lot of mentors, a lot of teachers, a lot of people just really just kind of guided me on this path. Mm -hmm. What what were some of the biggest hurdles um, that you had to, you know, jump through in order to participate i mean i gotta be honest there's so many i think the the initial one was cost so i literally had went from you know working at a coffee shop then i got a sales job and then i went back to the coffee shop because i had to take this a little bit more seriously but the entire time it's you know i was raised by a single mom she couldn't really foot the bill for me to, to follow this path so I have always had to work while I also competed. So it was never like I was able to go into a race feeling very comfortable, knowing that my needs were met. There are just so many times where I pretty much sacrificed everything. <laughs> and I, I can't tell you how many times I just looked at my bank account and it was either negative or I had 20 bucks. And, you know, I, I sometimes remember just thinking about all the times I used to just eat like, you know, just bread and chicken sandwiches because that's all you could afford. Right. So. You know, um, I would say like four years, four or five years, I was just like, just barely getting by, mm -hmm. just scraping to get by for this, for this dream of mine. And, you know, I was thankful to have a lot of people help me supplement that and support me. But I mean, the cost was tough. And then I just can't tell you the countless times I've had of the racism I experienced. So there was also the the mental fight I had to go through of just not mm. feeling like I was accepted. There were times where I would go to a pool in Florida and just everybody was like, what are you doing here at this pool? <laughs> you know? So, I mean, there was a lot of things I faced and, you know, it's really tough to explain to people what it's like to have, to go through, to have an obstacle, to have racism as your obstacle, right? Mm. To have people hating on you as one of your major obstacles. Did you feel that? and see that or was it something that you also heard sometimes i felt it i saw it and i heard it i would get direct messages you know i would get people be like why do you got to talk about that you're black why do you got to tell people you're the first black you know we have a we've had a black president why why is your skin color matter or you know people will say that when i would have a bad race they'd be like you're not a pro like look at you you got 30th like you shouldn't even be competing as a pro so you know, or just when I would go to a race in, you know, when I was a little bit more advanced in my career and still having people like talk to me, like I like, like, like I'd ask them a question to be like, who are you? Like, what are you doing here? All right. So. So as you know, Gatorade Endurance has been a big supporter and pro proponent of supporting athletes like yourself um, and the, the changing face and diversity when it comes to uh, endurance sports and how, how else do you think it could be different um, what other ways might be able to grant access to more people what other ways do you think would have allowed it to be a little bit more accepting and to make you feel a little bit better um, when you got to the pool or when you were in florida or you know even showing up at, at 30th place and, and knowing that you were a part of a community well, to be honest, a lot of people don't know this, but a group of us are actually tackling this issue. Uh, I recently competed in the Spartan Games. I think I mentioned I now do, like I've now dabbled a little bit into the obstacle course racing. And we were able to have a Black Lives Matter conversation while we were over at the Spartan Games. Mm. And then after I had an individual named Rhea call me up and say, Max, you know, I was really, 
I noticed there's only two black people at the Spartan Games, and I think there needs to be more. What do you think we should do? And I was just like, you know what, Rhea? We should really come up with a group. Like, we should really get the top obstacle course athletes and see if we can come up with a mentor program, reach out to people and say, like, hey, we're literally going to reach out mentor athletes and get them into the pro ranks. And I was just like, that's what I needed. That's what I needed starting on was just, like, if I could have had the top pro athlete that's winning world champions be like hey max like i'm just gonna call you up every two weeks see how's everything going just help you maneuver your way introduce you to my sponsors find a way to pay for some just open up the doors and give me access and give me the opportunity that would have allowed me to reach success much faster and you know i'm happy to say that a group of us are now saying like hey you know let's come together as a board Let's see how many people we can get on board. Let's reach out to people in the triathlon community. Let's reach out to people in the obstacle course community. And let's figure out how we can mentor people to get them into marathons, get them into running, get them into swimming, get them into biking and say, hey, I'm going to call you up every two weeks, check in on you and see (laughs) what we can do to get you to that elite level. How how important is that? Right. So in the world of football, and I was able to play for 11 years professionally, you know, and I had, you know, my teammates in my in the locker room and I had those those mentors and I understood how much it meant to me you know in order to get that phone call from one of my one of the old heads if you will um but you know what would that what would that mean to you in the endurance world right um and how could you in fact set up I don't know if it's a daisy chain of communication or it's a sort of a an established nonprofit that works in order to support those who are getting involved but how much would that that mean and, and how would you go about that? Well, we what we understand is that representation matters, right? So when you when the young ones and other individuals see us in a place, they understand that they can reach that. So that is what's very significant is because what happens is when you get into endurance sports, even if you don't become a professional, it affects you from your personal life. Mm-hmm. When it from a lifestyle standpoint because you know there's a lot of health issues in the minority communities and what happens is when you dabble into endurance sports as a young kid that's just like man i i don't have any opportunities endurance sports teaches you that hey you set a goal which is achieving accomplishing that finish line no one's else out there to help you you're just able to get a little bit of water along the way but you're left to your own devices in your own mental capacity right your own mind your own willpower so when you cross a finish line with your own willpower and your own desire you're like oh my gosh i can go accomplish something else outside of you know of the race course and the next thing you know you're like i'm not relying on anybody i know i can accomplish things on my own while also benefit your health and wellness benefits as well. So when individuals that are normally oppressed or said, hey, you're not welcome in this in this area and we have disadvantages and we have health issues, mm-hmm. and then they start seeing people in the endurance community, seeing a black person swim and seeing them jump over a Spartan wall and seeing them on this $15,000 triathlon bike, they're like, okay, let me try that. And the next thing you know, they have the same experience of what I did is as soon as I get into the triathlon, I'm like, yeah, all these doors are opening up for me. Like I can I can pay my bills because I'm working a full time job so that I can meet these needs. So there's just so many positive things that come from being in the endurance community. What was the first uh, feeling you experienced when you crossed the finish line of your first triathlon? You know. For me, because I had sprained my MCL, I felt overwhelming accomplishment of being like, man, like, like I'm healthy again, but also a little bit of just like, oh, like, I want to see if I can get better at this. And I think that's what naturally happens to everyone. You do one and then you, you kind of go through that really kind of like tough and you go through that dark place on the race course where you're just like, oh, I want to quit. I want to quit. And then you cross the finish line. Like, I did it. Like, I, you know, I went through all these tough times. And I, I honestly think that what it also does is it causes you to reflect on the times in your life where you think about giving up, but you don't give up. Right. And then you're just like, man, like, I really always prove to myself that I can always get through those tough times. And I think that that feeling that I've had of crossing my first finish line to the next finish line is really always the same because the races never play out how you think, right? Life never plays out how you think, but it's just like, right when you cross that finish line, you're like, 
All right, I can do that. All right, let me see if I can do another one. <laughs> well, th there's there's endless amount of races, um, but there's not endless amount of time in life. And so it's always important to commit that time. And it's all about that focus, right? It's all about that commitment to that to that moment. Um, and I think you'll, you find it regardless, uh, regardless of the sport, but it's true. You do hit those dark moments when you really feel like you're out there by yourself. I mean, if you're in the middle of, uh, of a marathon and it's 26.2 and about 16.4, your legs start to lock up. Everybody seems like they're running right past you. Um, you're on a, on a, on a back road and it's just you and, and, and nature and you just have to just get home, get home, <laughs> right? You're, you're in your own mind for that yeah. moment. And you yeah. realize that you have to depend upon everything that you've done over the last, you know, let's just say two, three months over the last year in order to prepare yourself in order to get there. Um, just to kind of continue down the line about endurance sports and, and participation. Uh, what do you wish you knew before you started that, you know, now? What I wish I knew before I started now is that you will benefit from your failures and have more patience, right? It's just, uh, I, you know, I, I, I honestly, I recently just ran for city council in Menlo Park and, you know, I got more votes than I thought and, you know, I didn't win, but I was just like, I'm able to go to my endurance world of just knowing that, like, I like failure. Right. I like not succeeding on the first try, because if you succeed on the first try, then you really got to worry because you're not going to mm -hmm. go through that growth period. So it's like I would tell myself, like, accept the fact that you're not going to be successful a good chunk of the time in the beginning, because that's going to really help you to grow and understand how you can be successful so that when you face certain obstacles, you're better prepared and equipped mentally, physically of how to overcome those obstacles and to have patience. I would say, Max, have patience. You want it to happen now. You want to be the best now. But in endurance sports, it's always about the endurance. It's always about the long game. It's always about the marathon. So instead of thinking that you're going to race now to success, be okay with just having, it's going to take 10 years, right? Mm -hmm. I've been in triathlon for 10 years. So be okay with having some more patience. Yeah, and I think patience is also allowing people to sort of move towards the world of endurance sports. And we have to have the, the advocates are, that are willing to be able to speak up and speak out about it so that people can naturally um, gravitate towards, towards this world. Because as you said before, it's, it's not an easy one to get involved in. It takes a lot of time and energy. It takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of commitment. Um, there's a lot of health and, and wellness that kind of goes al along with it. Um, and I think, you know, as we keep coming back to the same subject matter, um, how people how people treat you also affects you mentally. Right. So you not only are going through this sort of physical experience, you're going through this mental um, experience. Um, was there any as, as you went from triathlons and, and now you're doing obstacle racing, were there any moments where um, you know, you, you kind of evolved from that point where someone looked at you from getting 30th place and talking about, you know, your skin color to another moment where someone might have treated you differently uh, along your path. You know, I think I'm, you know, what's interesting is I'm in multiple different worlds in the endurance sports and I see it's interesting. It's like I built my name and platform in the triathlon world, but that acceptance is happening in the Spartan obstacle course world because it's, you know, you're a well-rounded athlete over in the obstacle course world. And so, you know, I think it's, it's a little, it's, it's a little interesting because I still feel as though in 2020, I go do certain things and I still feel like I'm just looked down and like someone doesn't know who I am. But then Oftentimes, it's like there could be a negative situation followed by the same positive situation where someone does recognize who you are mm -hmm. and gives you that same respect. But, you know, I, I still think we're still trying to get ourselves to a point where people kind of see us and respect us in the endurance world. Um, and I think it's tough just because we haven't we're not seeing a lot of 
representation in across these platforms or across these sports right now. Right. So, so, and this has hit me, you know, when, when someone comes up to you and, and you almost feel, I, I guess, you know, in the world of endurance sports and, and all sports, right? You work so hard at your craft and someone to come up and they, and they wonder who you are and they wonder why you're there. Right. Sometimes that, that makes you upset. Yeah. Because it's like, what do you mean? You don't know that I'm, you know, the first. Exactly. Right. So how did you how did you change your behavior? Because, you know, when people walk up to me and they say, hey, you know, Dahani, you, know, you, you played football. I'm like, yeah. Or if they say, hey, you know, did you play a sport? You know, sometimes I this other uh, light bulb goes off and says, well, just because I'm black, you think that I played football. Right. So there's this uh, this other stereotype that goes along with it. But you kind of have a, a different type of stereotype that's associated in the in the er- endurance sports arena. Yeah. So how did you behave differently or how did you hold yourself back? Um, because there's a certain emotional sort of uh, experience, as I said before, that you probably are going through. You know, your physical is changing, but your mental also has to change as well. So how did you how did you behave in those moments? Yeah, I think you, you you nailed it in your question in the sense like I think there's been more holding back, right? I think I've grown emotionally where I'm less reactive to certain mm-hmm. to how people treat me. I think there's a level of confidence. There's that veteran. Um and I think the biggest way that I've changed is like it's like I now I now probably just assume that you're not gonna respect me. Right. Mm-hmm. So I let and I think now what happens is it's like, all right, when I deal with the person that's just like blowing me off or just like, you know, treating me a certain way, then there's that feeling on the race course where you're passing them and they're like, oh, that, that dude. Oh, that <laughs> like, dude was oh, serious. Remember me? Yeah, <laughs> yeah see exactly. Bye bye. Exactly. Exactly. And then you just like, you know, you just keep it moving. You don't really say anything. And I think that's where the growth is. Um, but then I'd also touch on you know, then there's also still the same experiences where like, you know, I was in million dollar mile a show that was produced by LeBron James and people come up to me about like, I saw that shit for pretty much. I remember I was out riding my bike and uh, this guy I ride on group rides. It's just like, yo, there's Max. His son's like, Oh, I'm a big fan of yours <laughs> and a white kid. And I'm like, I'm like, Whoa, wait, what? <laughs> like, like the, that's an experience where I'm like thrown off where I'm just like, man, I didn't like, you know, I, like you feel appreciated in when you're so often just neglected and disrespected. Mm. Yeah, uh, I, I I forgot there was an there was an interview where I was talking to someone in the advertising space, and uh, they were talking about how some people are a little bit slow to accept new cultures in new products. And uh, someone walked into the room and they said, "You know, call your." call your son uh, or or call your grandson right because it's an it's a it's, it's an old school um, you know, old school community so I can only imagine you know here's this son of this you know of this white guy his his son was like I saw you max and I think that's a new generation of people uh, a new generation a new community um, that is starting to recognize in a different way as we move towards this world of 2040 where there's going to be more minorities than there uh, the minority is going to be the majority yes. right and so we need moments like that in order to confirm that things are essentially changing and like you said to see me right because that same white person can oftentimes see you a certain way where they're trying to run you off the road and then they're cursing you off and saying you know racist things but then I don't think there's that realization of like when they legitimately pull their car over and their son's like, oh, there's a the guy from television and my dad mm-hmm. knows him. That's a different level of seeing you opposed to seeing you the other way. And that oftentimes caught, like gives healing to me, right? It's I'm like, you know, because how many times do I ever ha- can I really point to? you know, a, a white guy and his son seeing me in that way. Whereas so long the history has been a white father and their son seeing a black man, you know, in such a negative way. Mm. So what do you want to share, you know, to encourage other endurance athletes um, or those that want to 
join the sport that really feel like they, they don't belong? You know, what I would say is what I, what I did myself is honestly start with writing down some goals, right? Know what it is that you want first, right? Mm -hmm. And start there and focus on your goals. If you want to get healthy and fit and live a certain lifestyle, then sign up for a whole bunch of races. I, I, it always drives me nuts when people are like, oh, I want you to help me do a race. I'm like, do you sign up for a race? You're like, no. I'm like, then don't talk to me until you put down the hundred dollars and you're like, oh, I need to get my money's worth. Right. So my biggest thing is sign up for the race and then show up and find out what you're made of. Right. That's what I like. I like to push myself to see what I'm made of, to see how hard I can push myself mm. or just, you know, if it's obstacle course racing or swimming, have those mini goals of like how many people can really say they swim 500 meters in the ocean. So maybe your goal is literally just signing up for an open water swim, working on your swim and swimming 500 meters in the ocean. But it's going to have to start somewhere, which is knowing what you want. Start with your tiny goals and then show up for race day and see how it goes and find out what you're made of. So... I know that um, one of the reasons why you wanted to participate in this speaker series um, had to be just because of being seen, right? You know, just to be seen. I'm Max. I'm yeah. the guy that's out there that's passing you by, whether it's an obstacle race or a triathlon. Um, but what are some other reasons, you know, that inspired you to participate in this conversation with Gatorade Endurance? There's, there's got to be more to it because... I know it's not just coffee. I know it's not just the racing. Um, I know it's not just the kid and his dad that pulled over in the in in the in the truck. I wanted to say pickup truck because I can only imagine so many pickup trucks that have gone past you that have gotten a little bit close as they've gotten close to me on the bike, Jeez. right? So the father and the son. But what other inspired other reasons inspired you to participate in this in this conversation with Gatorade Endurance? Representation, right? I honestly have accepted that maybe I'm on this path to just go forward so that, you know, break down some barriers, open some doors. You know, I, I know the kids that are following me on Instagram, the younger individuals that are following me on, on, on social media. And, you know, I tell them, I, I expect to see you as a pro one day. And they need to see this. They need to see that, like, I'm talking to Gatorade because just like you're going to be in this situation. And the biggest thing is also the affirmation that they need to understand that right now, that things are probably tough for them. They're trying to figure out, you know, they're dealing with a lot of situations, but this is that sign for them to stay on their path. This is their sign to understand that, hey, there's going to be opportunities here and for them not to give up, right? If you stepped on this path, then you need to follow through with it. It might take three years or it might take 10 years. But if your goal is to become an elite endurance athlete, make that your goal, come up with a plan and fulfill that plan. You will fulfill that plan. It's just going to take some time. But, you know, I'm here to tell you that you can be here and you can be better than me. And that's the most important thing. Like, you know, like I want to see, <laughs> I want, I, I always think about like, what's going to happen when that day, when that kid shows up and he's the prodigy kid and like, you know, for triathlon, just this black kid ready to like, you know, make the Olympic team and everyone's just going to rally around him and just cheer for them. And like, we're going to be like, there we go. <laughs> you know, that's what I'm talking about. So you know, I want those kids to know that this opportunity is here for me so that they can come through next and, you know, we can keep passing the torch along. Max Fennell, it truly is about the legacy, right? And being able to um, serve the cup of coffee, if you will, from one person <laughs> to the next. Yeah. Right. And it's about that experience and that conversation. And you've been doing your part. And so I appreciate you being a part um, of our conversation today. And, and the someone like me, speaker series by Gatorade Endurance, because without you, without you being seen, other people will, may not feel like they can to be seen yeah. and laying the groundwork, laying the pathway. Um, is an important part of the overall journey. So I just want to say thank you to, to you, Max, for participating in this conversation today. 
and to Gatorade Endurance, who really has dedicated to fostering inclusivity in the sport. It works to fuel um, by amplifying amplifying these important voices and stories we hope to inspire more individuals to explore endurance sports uh, because they see someone like themselves in the space so again max thank you so much and to thank gatorade you. endurance um we appreciate it thank you thanks for thanks for having me